What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to go over the five stocks that I personally believe will be the best bet of the next decade or even two decades. Uh, this is not financial advice. Just want to put that out there. This is my personal opinion. This video is purely for educational and entertainment purposes only. Consult a financial advisor. All that good stuff. I hold no responsibility for what you invest in because this is my opinion. Best five stocks. I own all five of these stocks, probably makes up about 35% of my portfolio, and I have such a strong conviction in all five of these stocks. I'm going to review them in one second, but first, I just want to say this is for the long term. This is for the next 10 or 20 years. Short term, I think the entire market is going to see a massive pullback. We are so overextended, so far away from the 100-day moving average, which is this blue line. You could see... We always kind of touch back down. This was during the coronavirus. This was 2018 market crash. I've been invested all the way back since 2017. We are so overextended. We need to come back down. Uh, hopefully the government will turn off that money printer soon. So this is not short-term analysis. This is not, hey, these are the next stocks, the next best stocks for this year. I'm talking about you buy these stocks and you sell them or or not even sell them, but you look back in 2030 or 2040 and see all the money you have made. Or I'm completely wrong and then you could uh, dislike this video. But in the meantime, like that video, subscribe to my channel, check out all of the videos I have. I have over 100 videos of great content, 16,000 subscribers. Thank you guys. Let's dive right in. The number one stock, not the number one stock, but my very first stock that I ever bought, and one of my number ones. This is the largest position I have in my stock portfolio. It is PayPal. I think this company is absolutely amazing. Uh, if you don't already know, PayPal owns Venmo, so almost everyone uses Venmo, at least where I live, everyone uses Venmo. And PayPal is diving headfirst into uh, the crypto craze. So I think that is going to be very bullish for PayPal's future. Uh, but again, great company. Let's jump over to the financials. So this is PayPal currently trading at $285 per share. And we have seen a massive return over the past year, 54%. Over the past five years, 670%. And I believe we could go much higher. We only have a market cap of $344 billion. I think PayPal could easily pass 500 billion over the next couple of years and then work its way to a trillion dollar company over the next decade. If we jump over to financials, you could see this is a financially sound company. Not only is it a growth company, its revenue is going through the roof, very steady increase, very just consistent. Uh, and then if we check at their net income, which is right here, also pretty consistent. 2020 was a killer year for them. Uh, if we jump over to cash flow, one thing I like to look at is their free cash flow. Plenty of free cash flow on hand. That should help in the coming years. And then ratios. I think one of the most important things, two of the most important things to look at is debt to equity ratio. Their debt to equity is below 50%, which is amazing. I think just for reference, Apple's debt to equity is well over 100%. I think it's close to 200%. So they are being very responsible with their debt. They are taking on more debt, but they are a growth company. But it's not like a crazy amount. 45% is very small. Uh, Warren Buffett likes to only look at companies under 50%. Uh, and then it's PE ratio. Yes, it's pretty high. But again, we are looking at a growth company. So that's expected. Uh, there are some tech companies where their P.E. ratio is insane and two, three hundred. Uh, this is only 65 right now. Again, a little high, but the whole market's overvalued. So you got to put that into consideration. Let's move on to number two, and that is Facebook. Whether you love it or hate it, Facebook knows how to make stupid money. Facebook owns both Instagram and WhatsApp. It has conquered the social media niche on the Internet. Uh, has, I think, about 3.4 billion users last time I checked. That's half of the world uses Facebook. So if you think Facebook is dying off, it is not. And on top of that, you got to remember, they have Instagram and WhatsApp as well. So maybe you don't use Facebook, but you use Instagram. Well, guess what? 
that profit is going back to Facebook. And guys, so financially sound. This company is even more financially sound than PayPal. You'll see in a second. It is a trillion dollar company just recently passed that. Uh, and it is trading around all time high. I'd like to see some pullback. There has been, it's, it's been choppy over the past five years with its price. Uh, this huge crash right here was due to, I think, a hack. Uh, and then something here. But I remember these massive crashes. I bought at the bottom there and there. I've also bought at the top. I'll keep on buying because I am looking, I'm looking 10, 20 years out. It has gone up 200% over the past five years. Not as crazy as PayPal, but still a nice profit for anyone. We jump over to the financials. And I mean, look at how much money it's making every single year since 2011. It started out with $3 billion in revenue. Now we're looking at $85 billion. So Facebook will continue to make money, in my opinion. If we take a look, here's its net income. Again, making plenty of money. And then are they being responsible with their money? There's plenty of other stuff we could look at, but these are the big ones I like to look at. Their free cash flow, more than enough money on hand. And with that, their debt is almost non-existent. And look at that. I mean, 8%, their debt is literally non-existent. For one, two, three, four years, they pretty much had no debt. And then they took on a very, very little amount of debt. Uh, and that's because they just make so much money. There's no reason for them to carry any debt. And then if we look at the PE ratio over, it was back in 2012, 1800, and it is just plummeted and it's getting closer and closer to 10. A PE ratio of 10 is pretty much what your OGs like Warren Buffett will look for and other financial institutions. So we keep getting closer and closer to that. So I think Facebook is a great company to invest in and will continue to go up. Again, not financial advice, but I don't think I need to keep reiterating myself. The next company, oh, and Facebook, I believe, will become one of the two biggest companies in the world, and it will be competing with none other than Google. Google is, I think, going to be the other monster. Facebook and Google are going to be neck and neck. They're going to be the new Microsoft and Apple, but again, time will tell. Let's take a look at Facebook's financials. You may think, man, it's getting close to $3,000. That's a lot of money. Yeah, right now it could be overvalued and we could see some nice uh, pullback. But again, that's going to be with the entire market. But I think Facebook can continue to go up after a healthy pullback. Over the past five years, we've seen a 261% increase. And one year alone, 88%. I remember I put in a buy order for a thousand dollars it never made it it made it down to 1068 so i did get in the game a little late around i think 16 or 1700 dollars that is still paid off pretty well for me even though it was was that an all-time high yeah i bought it at an all-time high but i mean from 1700 went all the way up to 2800 uh so good short-term trade but i think google has a long way to go it is almost a two trillion dollar company 10 years from now, easily see it being a $10 trillion company. That may seem impossible, but we thought a trillion dollar company was impossible. And th the first one to do that was Apple, not only a couple of years ago. Um, let's look at its financials. Again, a beautiful cash cow, making plenty of money, $182 billion a year. Let's drop down. Well, let's actually just go to free cash flow. To take a look at its net income plenty of money for net income are they being responsible with their free cash flow not as good as paypal and uh facebook but you know in current years they've had plenty of money on hand uh and i can't remember what their debt situation looks like let's take a look beautiful i mean 10 percent, 11 percent hardly carrying any debt whatsoever. Uh, a big reason why I invest in a company, I really like looking at companies with little to no debt. PE ratio, kind of around Facebook's PE ratio, 29, which isn't, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's not terrible compared to some other big tech companies. So overall, again, I think this is going to be a great bet over the next decade, even though we should be seeing some healthy pullback eventually. Uh, next, probably my favorite company 
It's been my favorite company for a couple of years now, NVIDIA. Been investing in it since 2017, but I feel like 2020 is really, 2021 has really been a great year for NVIDIA. Not only do they have graphics cards for gaming computers, they have graphics cards for mining, they have graphics cards for AI. I mean, this chip processor is in every aspect of our life and we don't even realize it. And on top of that, let's take a look at its financials. Recently had a split. We're almost up 100% in a year. 1,000, 1,300% in five years. It is a half a trillion dollar company. I am waiting for it to hit that $250 mark. That's my uh, target for the end of the year, even though we are very overextended. But again, long-term play, what will it be like in 10 years? Let's take a look at its financials. Making good money. It's, uh, that was income. Let's go over to cash flow. It's income. Absolutely beautiful. It's debt. Where is it set? Well, free cash flow. Not too hot. You know, we can't have all winners with uh, what I like to look at. It's PE ratio, very high. 74, that is very high, but it is right now a massive growth company and it is overvalued, even though I think we could hit that $250 mark. Um, and debt to equity, responsible. I mean, they're being responsible. It's not as great as Google or Facebook, but it's below that 50% mark that I like to see. Uh, and it's been below 50% for the past 10 years. So they're being very responsible with their debt, in my opinion. Again, my favorite company, and I've been invested in it since 2000, I think 2018. After this dip, I bought, you know, somewhere down here at that $45 price. This was pre-split, so it was four times the amount. Uh, but yeah, I started buying down here, bought some up here, bought some up here, and then I even bought some up here. Uh, Short-term target, 250 but I do believe it is overextended. But again, we're looking at the long-term, the very last company. Uh, it Its financials do not look good, but I think this could become the new Amazon and this is probably my riskiest bet, but it has paid off very well. And that is Shopify. I really do think this is going to be the new Amazon. Uh, not only are so many people starting to use it for all of their businesses, no more GoDaddy. I mean, you go to Shopify to make a website, but on top of that, it's UI. It's beautiful. Amazon's UI, especially, I'm not talking about for the consumer side, but if you're a seller, Amazon's UI is disgusting. I've used it before. It's not fun to use at all. Shopify I've used before as well. And if you're a seller, I really like the UI. Uh, so because of that, I mean, they're really putting a lot of money into research and development. They are a Canadian company and their price has gone up 3,500% over the past five years. Uh, you may think it's overvalued, but I remember people saying it was overvalued when it was only $500. And now look at it. It's $1,500. Again, are we going to see some pullback? God, I hope so. But we're only at $200 billion. Not even $200 billion. Meanwhile, companies like Amazon are over $2 trillion. So there's still plenty of market share uh, for Shopify to chip away at from Amazon. If we look at its financials, again, it's not pretty. It only recently started kind of becoming pretty. Uh, it's making a lot of money. Don't get me wrong there. So its revenue has been going through the roof. But if we look at its net income, this is its first positive year. And that is a huge thanks to the coronavirus. They are one of the companies that have really benefited off the coronavirus. But before then, they have been losing money every single year. And if we look at its free cash flow, it, it tries to keep cash on hand. I mean, before 2020, it really tried to keep cash on hand. But last year, it really ended up having a lot of cash on hand. Again, they have definitely benefited from the coronavirus. If we look at the ratios, they're going to be ugly. Here we go. 431. Very, very ugly PE ratio. A lot of financial institutions would definitely advise you to stay away from Shopify, 
But again, it's one of those riskier bets. Uh, let's look at their debt to equity. It's really not that bad. I mean, well, it's it's actually kind of great. 14%. So they're not keeping too much debt on hand, but they're they're definitely burning every last dollar they make and they're reinvesting it. And it has been paying off, as you could clearly see over the past five years. It's really been paying off, at least for the price. Uh, now it's just a matter of if the company can sustain this and if it could continue to grow like Amazon. Uh, will it? Only time will tell. Again, this is my riskier bet where the financials don't look too pretty. But I, I, I think uh, you know I'm willing to take that risk. Only invest what you can and what you're willing to lose. Make sure you diversify, all that good stuff. But again, not financial advice. Those are my five companies that I think will be the best bets of the next decade. That is PayPal, Facebook, Google, NVIDIA, and Shopify. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think are going to be the best companies of the next decade? Drop those comments below. Uh, smash the like button if you haven't already and subscribe if you haven't already. And guys, as always, I will see you in the next one.